Hi, this is Dr. Thomas, and in this review session, we will talk about solving equations with decimals and fractions. You need to remember the rules of solving equations. Of course, we know that whatever we do on one side, we must do it on the other side as well. And our whole objective is to get the variable, usually it's x, by itself on one side. And it doesn't matter if x is on the left side or the right side. We're just trying to get it alone. Okay, number two, you definitely need a thorough understanding of how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, decimals, and fractions. So if you can recall back in sections A and B, those concepts were covered in sections A and B. So by section C, you're supposed to have a thorough understanding of section A and B in order to solve equations using decimals and fractions. So it is a must that you know your integer rules in this section. Again, you should always read the directions because they may ask you certain things. For example, in section B, I think they ask you to change your answer to a mixed number. However, you may not have to in section C and D, so you have that option if they do not specify to change your answer into a mixed number. Also, simplify and reduce your final answer and always, always check all your answers before you turn in the exam. I recommend that you actually redo every problem as if you had not done it before because sometimes you end up writing the problem down incorrectly. And so if you just redo every problem back over, then you can make sure that you did not make that mistake. Okay, so let me go out of this and show you what the Rednex exam looks like in section C. So this is section C. This was the spring 2011 Rednex exam phase 1 and as you can see 1 through 7 are solving equation problems solving equation problems. So in this readiness exam review, that's what I want to talk about. How do you solve equations? I'm not going to do all seven, but I'm going to do maybe about four of these so that you can get start getting the hang, hang of it. Now, let's choose uh, possibly number number two first. Let's choose number two first. Now, and I'm doing this because number one, pretty simple. If you look at it, how can we get x by itself? We got 32 times x. You do the opposite. So you would do the inverse of multiplication. You would divide both sides by 32. So I'm going to go ahead and do number two because uh, most, most times students have issues with fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and do number two right now. x plus one third equals two over twelve. Now one thing I notice here is that two twelfths is reducible. Now you can go ahead and reduce it, but it doesn't matter. You can wait until the end and reduce it. So let's just wait until the end. Now we have x plus one third equals two twelfths. Notice here in order to get rid of this one-third because we're trying to get x by itself. In order to get rid of this one-third we really need to subtract one-third. How do we get rid of a positive number? We subtract it. So always remember to do the opposite of what you see. Opposite with what would make it go away. So really you should say what would make it go away. And here, if I subtract one third, it would go away. So let's do that. So we have x plus one third. Let's subtract. So 
so notice here in red this is what I'm using to get rid of the one third on the left side so as long as I do the same thing on both sides we are actually using correct math so what happens here one third minus one third is zero that's what we want x equals two twelfths minus one third what do we need in order to subtract these fractions you just can't go ahead and subtract them like like the fractions are now you must come up with the same denominator we call it the LCD so the LCD would be 12 here because 3 can go into 12 so it will be the lowest number the least common denominator All right so we now we have 2 twelfths and the equivalent fraction for this one third is 4 twelfths since 1 times 4 is 4 and 3 times 4 is 12 now that we have the same denominator we can combine the numerator so we have 12 and we have a 2 minus 4 x equals what is 2 minus 4 negative 2 twelfths and since we waited to the end to reduce this the answer is really negative 1 6 now how can we check this answer let's check it you can always replace the variable that was in your original problem with the answer okay so instead of writing x plus one third equals two twelfths we can write negative one six plus one third equals two twelfths Okay. On this side, what is the LCD? It is 6. So let's multiply 3 times 2 to get that 6. But you have to multiply the numerator times the same thing, or it's not what I call legal in math to do multiply a number times something without multiplying the numerator as well. So now we have negative one six plus two six which is negative one plus two is one six and of course two over twelve is also one six therefore we know that our answer is correct now that's going to take a little bit more time but it's worth it to walk out of that classroom knowing that you passed the readiness exam because you checked all your answers. Let's go on to the next one. So let's try number three here. It's x over 12 equals 8. Alright, so number three, x over 12 equals 8. So one thing I want to point out here is that x over 12 equals 8. What, what is the coefficient of x here? The coefficient meaning the number that's considered to be in front of the x. If you don't see anything there, is really a 1 there? It's really a 1. Alright, so another way to rewrite this would be one twelfths x equals eight. Just in case you didn't know that, this is the same thing as one twelfths, the fraction one twelfths times x equals eight. Now, in order to get rid of this one twelfths or this twelve, you multiply times the reciprocal of one twelfths. So let me rewrite this back over one twelfths x equals 8. What is the reciprocal of 1 twelfths? Reciprocal means just the flip version of 1 twelfths. So the reciprocal would be 12 over 1. 
12 over 1. Now, of course, 8 is the same thing as 8 over 1. Right? So, why does this work, this reciprocal? It works because the 12's cancel out. And we got 1's left. They sort of cancel too. But it's still always a 1. Even though we say it cancels. So, everything cancels out on the left. Leaving the X by itself. That's our whole objective. Is to get X to stand alone. And then we have 8 times 12. So we multiply across. 8 times 12 is 96 over 1 which is 96. So I always put it in its simplified version. So always simplify. Do not leave the answer as a number over 1. Always simplify. Again, you can always check your answer by plugging in your answer into x in the original. So instead of writing x over 12 equals 8, you can say does 96 over 12 equals 8? 96 over 12 is 8. So yes, it checks out. Alright, let's go to another one. Let's do number 4 here. Number 4, 4.5x equals 17.1. Four point five x equals seventeen point one. Now we have four point five x. That means multiplication. Four point five times x. So we always do the inverse operation of what we have, and the inverse of multiplication is division. So let's divide both sides by this coefficient here. Do it on one side, you have to do it on the other side as well. So this is really the easy part because we just already got rid of the 4.5 that was connected to the X. However, we're going to have to divide decimals. Okay, So let's go over here in the, on the side and divide the decimals out. So we have 4.5 divided into 17.1. Whenever there is a decimal here in the divisor, we have to change the decimal or move the decimal so that we're dividing by a whole number. So right now we're dividing by 4.5, but we must move it a certain amount of places until we get to a whole number. So all I really need to do is move it once. Because now I got 45. I have 45. And if I move it once here, I have to move it the same amount of times here. So really, we're multiplying or we're dividing 45 into 171. Okay, so let me rewrite that. So right now, we're dividing. 45 into 171 because all the decimals ended up behind the numbers. So that's the same thing as saying 45 into 171. Okay. Now, whenever you move your decimal, just go ahead and put it right above that decimal once you've moved it, not before. Once you've moved it, go ahead and put that decimal right above it. Now let's figure out how many times does 45 go into 171. Okay, so 45 times 3 is 15 carried 1, 12, 13, 135. 45 times 4 is 22 carried 1, 16, 17, 18, 180. So that's too much. So it is 3 times. So 135 and we subtract so we got 
that's going to be 11, and this is going to be 6. So 11 minus 5 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. And I recommend you always add these numbers here to make sure you got 171. Alright, I do. So next thing is to bring down the next number. When you're dealing with decimals, you must continue until you terminate. So you're going to have to add a zero when dealing with decimals and bring it down. Zero. How many times does 4 to 5 go into 360? So let's do 4 to 5 times 8. So that's 44, 32, 360. There we go. So 8 gives us 360. Subtract, no remainder. So that's what I mean about terminates. It terminated because we got a zero remainder. So the answer is 3.8. All right, let's try one more. Let's try number five here. All right, 300.33 plus x equals 412.41. Okay. Alright, so here it looks a little backwards, right? But we still have a positive 300.33. So if no sign is in front of the number, it is considered to be positive. So how do we get rid of something that's positive? We will subtract it, okay? So we're going to subtract 300.33 from both sides because we want to get x by itself. So here's how I'm going to write it. And of course, you're going to, normally students do it a different way than what I do. You all put the, y'all normally do like that. So y'all do the vertical format, basically, but I don't do it that way. You do it the way that's comfortable to you. All right. So right now, I'm going to show you what I'm doing to both sides by putting it in red, okay? I'm going to put plus x here, 412.41. I'm going to go ahead and put that minus 300.33 on this side as well to show you in red I did the same thing on both sides. You can't do it on one side without doing it on the other side. Okay. So what happens on the left side? This cancels. So we have on the left side just an x now. And we have to subtract this 412.41 minus 300.33. So you can do that on the side. Alright, so that's going to be 11. We need to borrow, make that a 3. Okay, so 11 minus 3. 8, 3 minus 3, 0, 2 minus 0, 2, 1 minus 0, 1, 4 minus 3, 1. I always recommend that you add these two numbers to make sure you get 412.41. I think we got it. So x equals 112.08 or 112 and 8 hundreds. Alright, that concludes this review session on section C of the Rednecks exam. Be on the lookout for part 2 of the review session for section C.